So first of all, Google and um, Georgia Public Policy Foundation, we're so excited that everybody's here today. And we welcome you to the first ever Georgia Digital Economy Forum. So we're thrilled to partner with everyone from the foundation. So we've got Kelly, Mike, Benita, and for their, all their hard work for this event. Now, I hope everyone had an opportunity to grab some breakfast, and most importantly, I want to give a shout out to some of our colleagues from the glass team and to my colleagues from the chrome team. Did you guys get to test glass and get to get a feel for it? You like it? Love it? Want one? Want one. That's good. So we have a great lineup of panelists today, and we'll be discussing some key issues and topics around the tech industry that are currently affecting growth of tech um, in Georgia. Um, my um, region is North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. So I go in and out of three very important tech states um, for Google. Um, there are areas where we have data centers, and in Georgia, we have a data center out in Douglas County, and we also have an office on 10th Street, and that's where I'm based. And when I travel these three states, I notice what the conversations around tech um, are. So, you know, if you're in North Carolina, it's the home Research Triangle Park. So they've had a one upsman on tech for a long time. If you're in South Carolina, the conversation is they're calling themselves Silicon South. Um, you have a governor in, who is really going after tech companies. Um, what she wants to do is create a technology hub in her state. And then when I come to Georgia, it's really interesting, different conversation. So in Georgia, the conversations focus around the great universities that you have here in, in one. Um, I don't know if y'all know, but there are a lot of Googlers who are Georgia Tech alums. Um, and there's a lot of love for Google um, and Georgia Tech. So when I listened to these conversations, I thought, well, let's start having some more conversations um, right here in Georgia. So working with Kelly and the foundation, we decided to start this off as a series, just kind of a nice form to kind of bring it all home. Now, um, as for Google, our data center has about, it represents about a $1.2 billion investment um, in the state of Georgia. And through our economic activity, um, through some of our products and services, we estimate that's another $2.2 billion. And that includes the website pu publishers, the nonprofit effort, and also through um, Google AdWords. So we love being here in Georgia, and we can't wait to hear more about where the digital county in our state can grow. Um, I want to take a moment to introduce a few Googlers who are here today, and I think some are still in the demo session. We have Dr. Sam Franklin. Um, um, Sam um, heads our Community Affairs Committee at Google. Um, he's a senior analytical guy, and he's, asked, I think you're brilliant, Sam. Um, we also have Marissa and Alex. They work out of our data center in Douglas County. Um, they're leading some of the demos. And again, folks from Glass. Now, today we have um, Chairman um, Ed Setzler. Um, he's Chairman of the House Committee on Science and Technology. Um, he understands the digital economy well and is a key influencer in our state around these issues. Um, he's a businessman. He's a veteran, so thank you for your service. And a father of four, he has served Northwest Cobb County and Georgia State House of Representatives since 2005. In addition to serving the legislature, Ed um, is a leader in the architectural engineering industry, where he has directed statewide design and business development programs for more than a decade. He's a graduate of the US Army Ranger School and earned a BS in physics from Furman University and served as a US Army officer for nine years. And he was assigned in Europe, North Africa, and the Persian Gulf. So please join me in welcoming I'm Representative Setzer. Welcome. It is, uh, it is exciting to see this group of folks come together, and I hope that investing a morning of your, your week is, is going to be meaningful to you. Um, we, we really treasure your investment of time in this, this conversation, and I uh, wanted to, just on behalf of uh, Governor Deal, um, the Georgia General Assembly, Speaker David Ralston, and Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, thank you for your, your investment of time. Um, I was thinking today as I was driving down um, as a as, as a Furman graduate from uh, from South Carolina, really grew up and, and finished school in South Carolina, that was really brought here to Atlanta after my military career by technology. Um, my first 
opportunity out of the Army was a technology-enabled um, nationwide facilities program that was sort of links facilities and environmental issues with a with a new technology platform that we rolled out nationwide back in 2001. That's what really brought me to Atlanta. Um, I'm just honored to be able to talk to you guys today very briefly and give a little bit of background, a very short background, about uh, uh, some of the, the, the approach of the state of Georgia to technology. Um, I will tell you, when, uh, when I look at what a legislature does versus what a university system does versus what the private marketplace does, we all have our distinct roles. Um, sometimes legislatures want to get and do what the private marketplace needs to do. Sometimes legislatures and executive branches of government university systems kind of get confused in their roles. But I wanted to tell you that uh, the state of Georgia is laser focused in staying in our lanes and doing the things that we can do uh, to make the, what you might call the ecosystem of technology really work here in Georgia. Um, Many of you may recall uh, last year a pretty strong legislative effort led by Lieutenant Governor Cagle, supported by the legislature, to expand access to capital uh, for high-tech investment. Um, I think you'll look at uh, some, some things we've done really over the last two generations at Georgia Tech, allowing GTRI really to be a national leader. I was uh, talking to the, the, the VP of, um, of, of research for Georgia Tech, and when you really look at the programs, the things that are implemented in the marketplace and the things that are implemented in the government space and the defense space from, tech, from a technology standpoint, um, you could make a very strong argument that Georgia Tech is having a much larger impact than even the MITs and the Stanfords. When you really look at the programs and you really look at the impact. And that's the kind of credibility we want. We don't need to just have credibility we could talk about. We like to put, uh, put deeds in action. And I think when you really look below the surface at the program level, we really have a unique uh, thing going here in Georgia. Legislatively, I'll close with this and just kind of share what I believe is, is a common philosophy among legislators here. Um, I go back to a book written in the early 1990s um, by a, uh, an author and professor from the Sloan School of Management at MIT, Peter Singe. When he wrote the book, The Fifth Discipline, The Art and Practice of the, Lear of the Learning Organization, Singe talks about things that really make innovation and breakthrough happen, and he lays out a couple of things. But the thing that sticks out to me uh, that was really, really brought home to me well last week in talking to a group of innovators who were coming to the state was the idea of eliminating limits to growth. That all too often, innovation, breakthrough, and advance in business, or, or re really any sphere, um, isn't always by bringing the last thing, the last piece of the puzzle in and, and injecting it into a system. Very often, from, from, a, from a leadership perspective, the linchpin is eliminating a key limit to growth to allow growth to happen organically and naturally. I was talking last week to a group of uh, educational innovators who were coming in from outside the state for the first time to bring a, an innovative performing arts charter school to Georgia. The group's called String Theory, and rather than being scientists, their, their, their school is centered around performing arts uh, from, from string ensembles to, to ballet, dance, and other things. And I was sitting with a group of attorneys who were looking to, to bring the first string theory school to Georgia. And uh, I, I love beating up on attorneys, and if you're in the audience here, I'll, I'll do that again. Um, but I, how often do you, are you around a group of attorneys that are just giddy and excited about something? I mean, very seldom do, 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 do attorneys kind of betray that kind of enthusiasm about things. But in talking to this group of three attorneys, they were giddy about bringing this innovative performing arts charter school to Georgia because of the environment that Georgia has created to be charter friendly and to be innovation friendly in K-12 education. And I will tell you, it's not the legislature scoring points or even the governor's office scoring points for people. I will tell you, the legislative view towards Georgia is allowing institutions like Georgia Tech, Georgia Tech Research Institute to thrive in the education space and eliminating limits to growth for, to entrepreneurs and innovators, removing obstacles so that innovation and exciting things can happen in Georgia. Uh, we just saw that last week again with this group of education innovators coming into the state. And I will tell you that uh, when the paper and our naysayers who like to, to attack Georgia and kind of break Georgia down are always kind of talking the line of, of negativity, there's a lot of good things happening here simply because 10, 20, 30 years ago, five years ago, limits to growth were eliminated, were moved out of the way so that the marketplace for technology can really thrive in Georgia. And um, I think it's important for us to understand our roles and, and, and be excellent and committed to those excellence in those areas. 
so that you all can be committed to excellence in your area.